Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here to Lawrenceville, Georgia, the host side of the 2018 AII Baseball Championship. Today was moving day. We started with five. We'll finish with three and two will be eliminated. We take a look at the highlights here. Daniel? First game of the day, Fisher against College of the Ozarks, the first elimination game of the tournament. Bottom one, Chad Roich takes the first pitch to the left field wall for a leadoff double. You'd hear his name again as then we fast forward to J.D. Payne. Sacrifice fly on what could have been a deep fly. Just got under it as the College of the Ozarks takes an early 1-0 lead. They'll face Fisher who blew a 12-0 lead in the game one but today, doesn't look like the Falcons would have a lead at all. But first, the play of the day potentially as a one-handed grab, barehanded. Look at the pitcher's reaction. Wade LeBlanc can't believe it. Now we go bottom two and Chad Roish at the plate again. Soft serves this pitch to left field. Maybe having a play at the plate, but Max Pulley in there way in time. And it's a 2-0 lead for the Bobcats. Now bottom four and J.D. Payne comes to the plate. Lines it right up the middle. Ishmael Perez, great reactions. Fielding was... At a premium here at Fisher, but we go more bottom four and Cole Kelly would find a gap. Continuing to roll. Runs in the first, second, third, and fourth for the Ozarks. They would not need to look back as they had the arm of the newcomer of the year, Jay Kaufman. Look at that arm as they would have some help from the defense. 5-4-3 double play from Pulley to Carlson all the way to Payne. As we go back to the bottom of the seventh and we look at more Carlson. This time instead it's a robbed catch by Jose Jimenez. Carlson wasn't having the greatest day at the plate. He did put together a triple and a single, however. Now back on the mound, however. He had his stuff. Complete game, shutout win. Game number five on your bracket is a winner's contest. Both these teams 1-0. Top-seeded George Winnett versus the three-seeded Talladega Tornadoes. Getting things going, Luis Ortiz with a triple over Chris Jones' head in center field. It would score Emmanuel Calabaro, and the Tornadoes would storm into this contest and grab an early 2-0 lead thanks to Julian Lopez. Perfectly executed bunt to the first side and would drive in a second run. You see the emotions out of that Talladega dugout. Gregory Lucan in for the Starter for the Grizzlies would settle into the contest. Get a nice 4-6-3 double play. And then Alex Garland on a good bunt defense would see a lot of the small ball tactics out of this Talladega team who is used to slugging their way to six and a half runs per contest. But the story continues for Georgia Gwinnett. The comeback kids on another one with the bases loaded. Marcus McCorkle will deliver a two RBI single. Brandon Frazier, a bases loaded walk as Georgia Gwinnett would take a three to two lead. And it just seems normal. It seems natural for this team to continue to come from behind late in contest. They would do that again here today. Chris Jones issues a sacrifice fly into right as Georgia Gwinnett would put up a four spot in the fifth to take a four to two lead. Walter Corsi would be part of a two run rally in a six as Cord Johnson hustles into the plate and the Grizzlies would be up six to two. All is well with a familiar feeling until Talladega gives Georgia Gwinnett a taste of their own medicine. A six-run rally in the top of the seventh started off by a beautiful base hit on a hit and run by Jorge Rodriguez. That scores Julian Lopez. Gustavo Castellano will get in on the action too with a two RBI single, and Talladega would tie the ball game up with that big base hit by the designated hitter, and the Tornadoes would come back of their own and lead 8-6 to six over Georgia Gwinnett. C.J. Bowers' RBI double would get the Grizzlies within a run at 8-7, to seven, and that's as close as the Grizzlies would get. The Tornadoes would tack on three insurance runs in the ninth. Emmanuel Paro gets it on the action with an RBI single. Luis Ortiz, a two-RBI single. And Talladega puts 11 runs on the board, playing a lot of small ball today. With the infield in, a chopper over the right side, and the Tornadoes would punch the first ticket handed out by the AII office, an automatic bid to the NAI opening round for the third time in program history. How would the College of the Ozarks and Edward Waters College follow the game of the day? Well, pitchers, avert your eyes. This was a high-scoring first inning. J.D. Payne had an RBI in Game 1. He has an RBI in Game 2 in the first inning with that RBI single. Then you fast-forward to Max Pulley. Rips one to left, high off the wall, only gets credited for a single on that one as they held, but still picks up the ribby. It's three to nothing. Now we fast forward. Tyler Whitus comes to the plate. Hitting is not over here in the top of the first. Jonathan Radomski gets hit for four runs in the top of the first, but he would bounce back. Just wait. A four-run top of the first for the Bobcats. 
Now, if anyone's going to come back, it's going to be Edward Waters College. Wyatt Reed at the plate after a Keelan Washington single and moving over on a wild pitch. He's going to score on the base hit to left. Nice throw by Jacob Carlson. He had an arm today, but Washington's four hits were too good. Tyler Rich, the rich get richer as he lines one down the third base line for an RBI double. Moves to third on the error by Carlson in left. Connor Pomering and Jonathan Radomski was the pitching matchup, but I don't recommend that you look at those box scores. It's 4-4 four to four at the end of the first inning. Now we'll move to the second, and Radomski's going to need some help from his defense as he's going to get through this one. It's a must-win game for both teams, and he does get some help. A 6-4-3 double play started by the All-American Pontius from a year ago. Now we move to the end of the third. And it's a wild pitch as the runner, J.D. Payne, scores. He moved from first to second to third to home, all on wild pitches. Now top of the third, a slicing liner to the gold glove winner in right. And don't you believe Will Box is going to make this grab, making his namesake proud. Now we go bottom four, and Camden Frankie adds on to the monstrous day he had Saturday with an RBI sack fly. It won't be the last you hear of Caden Frankie as, again, a nice arm by Carlson in left. Top five, one out. Radomski still facing some trouble as Jay Kaufman has a runner on first. Kaufman, after his complete game, shut out in the early game. Gets the ground rule double, which is going to hold up the runner heights at third, and they would not score him. Second and third, one out, and they strand him. Ozarks had some trouble scoring with runners in scoring position, but the defense helped out. Carlson rolled into another double play here, this time 4-6-3 variety. Now bottom six, Caden Frankie at the plate again. And this one bursted the game open from 6-5 to 8-5 on his second and third RBI of the afternoon. The double to left center scores Washington and Reed. Four different Tigers had multi-hit games. Still in the inning, Cabrera at the plate, bottom six, and he makes it 9-5 with a soft serve hit to center, his third single of the day. Royce overruns it, an error for him. Four errors by the tie, excuse me, by the Bobcats won by the Tigers. Now we look in the ninth inning. One last chance. Potentially the bases loaded. Tying run coming to the plate. Nope. Instead, they're going to send the runner. And Carlson gets gunned at home. What a tough decision. One out left. Radomski going for the complete game win. He gets it with the strikeout. Six games in the books here at the AI Championship. There's been four come from behind victories. Two by Edward Waters. One by Talladega. Another by Georgia Gwinnett. And moving day does not disappoint. Unfortunately for Fisher and College of the Ozarks, their season is done, and those three teams with come-from-behind victories will all meet up tomorrow for the championship. 11 a.m., the second automatic bid out of the AII will be handed out in that game between Georgia Gwinnett and Edward Waters. Talladega awaits in the championship at 3 o'clock. Fans, don't forget to log back on to AISports.com for a complete recap. For Dale Gilman, Daniel Gilman, I'm Matt Mahoney signing off. We'll see you tomorrow, 11 a.m., bright and early, right here on the Grizzly Digital Network.